Hey all of us, it's so great to see you. This is Pastor Tim and we are begin our Lenten journey uh, last night with uh, Ash Wednesday. And so this is Thursday. This is the first uh, day, if you will, or second day after Ash Wednesday that uh, begins the Lenten journey. And I was thinking um, today about um, the things that I like, the things that um, had real rich meaning in my life. Uh, music has a rich meaning in my life. There, there are songs and there are musical groups and there are uh, just, you know, lyrics that, that speak to me and speak to me over and over and over again. The same holds true for movies. And, you know, uh, especially when I was a young man, I recall so distinctively uh, being inspired by um, movies that uh, demonstrated um, a sense of, uh, of, of, of being macho, a sense of being strong, a sense that um, you were invincible, tough, rugged. Uh, maybe that's the reason why I, uh, I, I joined the Marines. I remember um, John Wayne in, in one of his movies, right? Uh, the Sands of Iwo Jima, where he, and he keeps on telling them to, to saddle up, right? That means that get your stuff, get together. And here we go. We're going to the next, um, the, the next conflict, the next event in this journey of um, of war. And um, I always thought about that as this this real sense of, of saddling up and collecting yourself, bringing together all those things that you thought were important to go forward in your life. Um, this real sense that, uh, you know, kind of getting on your horse and, and moving out, right? And so I, I thought about that today as I was reading and praying about um, the lectionary and today's gospel reading. And today's gospel reading comes from the gospel of St. Luke. It's chapter 9, it's verses 22 to 25. And Jesus said to his disciples, the Son of Man must suffer greatly and be rejected by the elders, the chief priests, and the scribes, and be killed on the third day, be killed, and on the third day, be raised. Now, if you didn't know the grand scheme of this entire story, if you were a listener uh, to Jesus, um, it would have been an incredibly shocking moment. They knew that he was describing himself in a very specific way. I'm the son of man. And the things that I'm saying, the words that I'm using, the actions that I'm taking, are not going to be accepted by the institutional leaders. It's not going to be accepted by the people in the know who have the say, who have the control, who have the power. And there's going to be an incredible consequence for that action. And I could imagine if I were turning and saying this, um, that the followers, the, the disciples, the apostles um, would have been uh, thinking or even ha or rather having second thoughts about this relationship, about this following Jesus Christ, because that's what exactly what a disciple is. When you're discipling, you're following the teacher, the master, the leader. Right? And so asking them to be disciples means that they're ask, he's asking them to do the things that he is doing so that, may, that they may fulfill the promise of this gospel, this good news experience. And this, this is going to happen to me. And then kind of shed the light on the fact that this could very well happen to them if they're going to follow this course, if they are for lack of a better term, going to saddle up with Jesus Christ. The gospel story continues this way. He said, then he said to all, and I think it's important he said to all, because when Luke covers this, when, when Luke um, presents this to readers, the very first readers, and to us today, there's a sense that the finger of Jesus is pointing at us, you and I, he says this to all. He says this to every listener. And he says this very distinctively. If anyone wishes to come after me, he must deny himself, take up his cross daily, and follow me. 
And I want you to break that down a little bit here. I won't belabor it too much, but is that exactly what John Wayne's saying? The, 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 the Marines who are sitting there waiting for orders are, are resting and relaxing, right? Taking a break from the hardship that they've already experienced in combat. And Jesus is saying that they've already gone on quite a journey, and we are on this Lenten journey together. And if we think about ourselves in this way, our lives are rarely an easy task. There is difficulty. But Jesus says that I want you to take up your cross, take up that thing by which I have said is for you to take or not to take. And too often, folks, uh, will see... Um, something that they have no control over as a cross to bear. And Jesus makes it very clear. This is a choice. The cross of Jesus Christ is a choice. He turns to them and says, not a, a demand to saddle up, but a question. Will you saddle up? Will you take on this cross Will you challenge the, the, the powers uh, and authorities for the good news? Will you be aware that when you take up this cross, when you live as a Christian, when you love as a Christian, when you show mercy and forgiveness, kindness, when you work for peace, even at your own expense, and that's exactly what Jesus does here, will you pick up that cross? This Lenten season, I ask you this. That you pause and really look at the cross. And decide for yourself. Do you want to pick it up? By picking it up, you are following Christ. On this dangerous journey of transforming the world. Of refusing to do anything but good and holy and just living. To try to find ways by which we're aware of the fact that we um, have um, anger in our hearts, that we have violence, that we have frustrations. We say that we're going to allow Jesus to be there with us, not to blame God for what's going on, but to realize that we walk beside God. We walk beside Christ and we are filled and inspired by the Holy Spirit in this day, at this time. The journey will be not easy. The challenges will certainly be there. But I want you to know that you are never alone. I invite you this, this journey, this Lenten season, to really examine that cross. And to honestly say, or really ask, am I ready to pick up that cross and follow the Lord? He finishes this way because this is really the decision that should be on your heart with the cross. For whoever wishes to save his life will lose it, but whoever loses his life for my sake will save it. What profit is there for one to gain the whole world yet lose or forfeit himself. I pray this day that you gain the whole world during the Lenten season and that you are enriched. You see the inspiration and you are illuminated. That, that is what's at the end of the journey. For as he says at the very beginning, I will again be raised up and so will you. Remember that God loves you, and so do I. And go in peace this day. In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen.